<laughs> Amen. Thank you very, very much for the invitation and the opportunity to be with uh, the Somerset West congregation and others around the world. It is always a joy to connect with God's people and to reconnect uh, and to talk with, uh, with our brothers and sisters that we haven't seen in a long time. Uh, I believe it's also Brother Victor's birthday today. Uh, I had a very brief chat with Brother Victor. He, uh, he sounded so good. And we spoke about how fast the time goes. Uh, I know also that they are expecting um, a, a little one within the next few months. So uh, I'm really overjoyed at that news. Uh, just very briefly also at uh, the Benoni congregation, we appointed six deacons today. Uh, and uh, so it was a real uh, historic moment today uh, in the life of the Benoni congregation that after several years of there being no deacons to uh, support the elders and to uh, to help the congregation with the work that needs to be done. Of course, as you know, COVID-19 threw everyone uh, a curveball and delayed a lot of the progress that we were hoping to make, but the deacons have been appointed. So there is tremendous excitement uh, at Benoni at this time. Please continue to pray for us and the elders and the new deacons and their wives and the work that's being done. So tonight, uh, I'd like to talk about Mother, the Bond of the Home. And the text, as uh, was read earlier tonight, comes from Genesis chapter 2, verses 22 through 24. And by the way, when I heard uh, Yandre uh, speak, I thought, wow, this is not the Yandre that I know. He's all grown up and he's got a voice that's deeper than mine, <laughs> uh, probably uh, most of us. Uh, but it's such a wonderful thing to see him and Henlu uh, playing such an active role in the congregation being so young. Uh, it truly is a, a wonderful example for the young men out there. Uh, before we continue uh, from our side, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, the grandmothers, and of course the great grandmothers. And if they are great, great grandmothers, I think uh, Tani Clara might be a great, great grandmother. Uh, it's also uh, happy Mother's Day to you. Uh, as of, uh, we know, today is internationally recognized as Mother's Day in, honors, in honor of mothers around the world that sacrifice their time and their efforts and their talents, and they make a, a, an unquantifiable contribution to the world. Now, the first time mother is mentioned in the Bible, there were no mothers as yet, uh, strictly speaking. Uh, God had just created the first people, Adam and Eve, and he was busy setting up or setting the stage for the family unit. What is interesting is that God had formed Adam out of the dust of the ground, but Eve, God built. When you look at Genesis chapter 2, uh, two verse 22, most translations will say that uh, God took the rib from Adam and that he made or formed a woman. But the Afrikaans, the old translation of the uh, Afrikaans version of the Bible, says that God built a woman around the rib. Uh, the Young's literal translation also uses this term, which is closer to, uh, to what the original intent of the scripture is, that God builds a woman. Adam, he formed from the dust of the ground, but Eve, he built from the rib of Adam. And this is why our sermon title is Mother, the Bond of uh, the Home, because the Hebrew word for mother means the bond of the family. Someone said that if the father is the head of the home, the mother has to be the heart. Everything revolves around mom. Someone said that mother is the sweetest name I know. There is a book that I read a while ago by a lady called Karen Loveless. And the book title is called, What If There Were No Moms? In summary, if there were no moms, mankind would die out in a maximum of four generations if there were no mothers. Someone else put it this way, using trees as an illustration. When the last tree dies, the last human being dies. And so mothers play an integral role to our to, to, to our lives and to society and to the world in general. You know what is even funny uh, when we, uh, these days, everyone has a computer and even uh, your, your cell phone is a computer these days. And uh, a, 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 a computer has what they call a motherboard. And listen to what 
the explanation, the, the summary of what a motherboard is and the role it plays in a computer. Listen to this. A motherboard is the backbone of a computer system, providing a platform for installing and coordinating various hardware components. Does that sound familiar? Of course it does when we apply it to the fabric of the family, that the motherboard is the backbone of the computer system in the same way that she's the backbone of the family unit. Listen to what Cheryl Lacey Donovan had to say. She said, mother is a verb. It's something that you do, not just who you are. So let's briefly take a look at what we owe our mothers. And of course, this will vary uh, depending on what age we are and where we are in life uh, in terms of what we owe our mothers. But number one, <clears throat> we owe our mothers our obedience. Uh, the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 uh, and similarly in Colossians chapter 3 verse 20 says, children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. In the Colossians passage he says, obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord. So if we want to be pleasing in God's sight, then we need to obey our mothers. Something obviously when we look at social media today, we look at TikTok videos, we look at uh, sitcoms on television, um, the parents are the ones that tend to, to not know what's going on around them. And the children are the ones that if you want to know anything, ask a teenager. Sometimes even the five-year-old knows more than the father or the mother. And of course, this is not true when we look at God's model for the family. Solomon advised his son in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8, not to uh, forsake the teaching of the law of your mother. So mothers have a law, and of course, their law uh, is grounded in the law of God when they teach and raise their children to be godly. Even Jesus, we find in Luke chapter 2, verse 51, Jesus obeyed his mother as he was growing up. Luke 2, 51, remember how this plays out in the temple? Uh, they had lost Jesus. I know that sounds, uh, <laughs> that actually sounds like a contradiction in terms of how, how do you lose Jesus? Anyway, uh, Jesus's earthly parents had lost him and they found him three days later reasoning with uh, the religious leaders in the temple. And uh, uh, when they, um, when they uh, confronted Jesus about this, and remember I said, I must be about my father's business. But Jesus later on, uh, he accompanied them home and he was submissive to, uh, to his earthly parents. And of course, this would include his mother. So of course, this pertains mostly during the period of children growing up in the home. Although adult children can also benefit greatly from the advice given by godly mothers. I think of the benefit that young Timothy had received by having a godly mother and grandmother. Uh, think of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, where Paul says, I'm reminded of, of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lewis and in your mother, uh, uh, your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And he says, I'm convinced that it also lives in you. Notice how Paul uses the term lived. It first lived in your grandmother and then in your mother, and now this lives in you. So this faith was somehow incul inculcated into the life of a young Timothy. It's something he saw demonstrated, and it is something that he saw lived out in the lives of his mother and his grandmother. Our faith is a living faith, and it is a lived faith. So firstly, we owe our parents our obedience, but also we owe them our respect. We are to respect and honor our fathers and mothers, which is the first commandment with a promise that Paul refers to in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2. And he says, so that it may be well with you and so that you may live long on the earth. And of course, Paul was quoting from Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, uh, from the Decalogue from the Ten Commandments. Solomon warned of grave consequences for those who curse their parents. And sadly, I have actually observed this uh, in, uh, in a particular family. They, they were not members of the church. And even though these two, uh, two boys, there were four children, uh, two boys and two girls, and uh, the, the boys were very disobedient and very disrespectful to their parents, to both their father and their mother. 
And the sad thing is that as I observed, I was a younger, uh, a young child and they were young adults already. And I observed how these men's lives played out. And both of them sadly amounted to nothing. Both of them died ignominious deaths without ever making a, a, uh, a significant contribution to society or to their families or even in the workplace. And Solomon says that there are grave consequences. The, 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 the lamp will be put out of those who curse uh, their mothers or their fathers, Proverbs 20, verse 20. There's an ancient uh, Chinese proverb that says, respect for one's parents is the highest duty of civil life. Common decency demands that we respect our parents, especially our mothers. I love that passage in uh, Proverbs 31 from verse 10 through to the end to verse 31. And I know that uh, the ladies normally would use that passage when they have a ladies day or a ladies retreat or a ladies class. It's a well-worn and very well-known passage among the ladies. And I love that passage because in that passage, I see God's design for the woman and the godly mother and the godly wife. And right at the end, after uh, Solomon talks about all of the attributes of this godly woman whose value is more than that of rubies, he says, and I'm, I'm using a paraphrase that says, show her respect, praise her in public for what she has done. The third thing is that we also owe her, we owe our mothers our love. Uh, you know, when I think of the calling of Elisha, you remember in 1 Kings chapter 19, how God instructs uh, Elijah, who had fled from uh, the Queen Jezebel, who had threatened his life. And uh, Elijah runs all the way back to Mount Sinai. Interesting, uh, the place where God gave the law to Moses and lo Moses passed it on to the children of Israel. And then God instructs uh, Elijah to go back. I want you to go back and do three things. You're going to anoint the next king of Damascus or Syria. You're going to anoint the next king of Israel. And then you're going to anoint your success, say Elisha. And off Elijah goes. And when he finds Elisha, this is 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 20. All Elijah does is he throws his mantle around the shoulders of Elisha and he walks on. And one would think that's an interesting way of introducing yourself to your successor and, uh, you know, giving him his mandate or his mission, right? Uh, and I kind of get the idea that uh, Elijah must have maybe been a little bit grumpy. Maybe uh, he felt that God had, uh, had, be, had, had been unduly harsh with him. But whatever the reason, Elisha immediately leaves uh, the yoke of oxen that he's plying with. And he runs after Elijah and says, please let me go and greet my mother and father. Let me say goodbye to them. And then I will come and follow you or be your servant. Literally, it means to walk behind you. And so we see that Elisha demonstrated the affection that is due to parents in 1 Kings 19, verse 20. And why not when they give us so much love as their children? Uh, there's a term called mother love, and it's a word that is used to describe the selfless love of a mother who gives love to a child. Funny, we don't have the term father love, but we have the term mother love. Um, I was watching a little video that somebody sent to me earlier on, uh, on WhatsApp. And in this video, uh, there's a, uh, it's, it's a video where a, a, a boss or an HR man manager is interviewing um, you know, a series of people for a job. And he talks about the long hours that they are to work without a break. And he says, most of the time you'll be working standing up. You'll be working without a break. You'll be working 365 days a year. And through every stage of the interview, the various people, these little, these little cameos, little, little um, scenes where you see how the, the, the interviewees are shaking their heads or they're going, wow, or no, I could never do that. And at the end of the interview, the interviewer says, the person I'm interviewing you for, the job I'm interviewing you for is that of a mother. And it's at that point that they all strike their foreheads with their palms of their hands because they're realizing the value of a mother, the long hours, the sleepless nights, uh, the extra effort, the, uh, the fact that a mother gets no day off 
And the interviewer ended his interview by saying, and it is an unpaid position. And of course, they really, really balked at that idea that it is an unpaid position. Very often, it's an unrewarded position, especially when children do not show their mothers the love that is due to them or the respect or the obedience that is due to them. Love can be shown in words by saying, I love you, mom. It can be shown in hugs. It can be shown in actions. It can be shown in gifts, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, we know that today, many of our moms were shown and told how much uh, they were loved. The fourth thing that we owe our mothers is wisdom. It is interesting that Solomon writes in Proverbs 10 verse 1, also Proverbs 17, 25, that a foolish son is the grief of his mother. I remember uh, my late grandmother on my mother's side, she had eight sons. And I remember how she would pray for each son by name. And how sometimes as a young boy watching her pray, uh, when some of the, the sons that were not, uh, you know, behaving in a, a godly way or in a, uh, uh, or in a way that was pleasing uh, to her, she would shake her head while she prayed, sensing, you know, I, I would sense her grief as she prayed for that particular son by name. And Solomon says a foolish son is grief to his mother. When we look at how uh, Jesus uh, grew up, we see that he increased in wisdom as he grew from childhood to, uh, to adulthood, Luke chapter 2, uh, verse 52. Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature with God and with man. And I'm pretty sure that the submission to his mother had something uh, to do with that. We know that mothers worry about their children. Uh, they worry unduly. Uh, a, a mother will pray constantly for her children, and of course, uh, not excluding fathers. I know as a father, I pray for my children every morning and every night, and I'm concerned about them as well. But I think mothers more so, because mothers have a deeper bond with their children. In fact, on a biological level, uh, mothers and children share DNA uh, uh, in the womb. And so there's a, there's a deeper biological connection that mothers have with their children as they share their, uh, their DNA. So much wisdom uh, can come from the advice that mothers themselves give us. Irma Bombeck uh, said, when your mother asks, do you want a piece of advice? She is not asking for your permission. You're going to get it anyway. <laughs> Bern Williams said, sooner or later, we all quote our mothers. And that is so true. Sooner or later, we all quote our mothers. Uh, by the way, um, I've got an acrostic that I took from the Benoni notice board uh, that Loretta Young did about mothers. Uh, I, I want to give it to you very quickly. Uh, the letters M-O-T-H-E-R. The M stands for mothers are magnificent and she has a mouth of wisdom. The O is that she operates out of love. She's optimistic. The T, she has a tongue of truth and she's talented. The H, she honors God's word, and she is hardworking and helpful. The E, she has everlasting faith, and she is always encouraging. The R, she is respected, and she reveals her righteousness. I really like that. And of course, that was written and put up on the notice board by a mother uh, herself, Loretta Young. The fifth and the last thing that we owe our mothers before we wrap up, is we owe our mothers and our grandmothers and great-grandmothers our care. We owe them our care and our compassion. Parents, especially widowed mothers, deserve our care. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 4 and verse 16, we have the instruction by the Apostle Paul to Timothy as to how widows are to be uh, taken care of. Firstly, the family needs to be to, 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 uh, to take care of the widows. And if the family cannot take care of the widows, then the church has to step in and take care of the widows. And of course, uh, verse eight of 1 Timothy chapter five says that if we don't do that, if we don't take care of our, of our widowed mothers and our widows in general, uh, those that are not able to take care of themselves and those whose families can't take care of them or who don't have families to take care of them, if we don't do that, we are worse than an unbeliever. 
You know what is interesting? Several years ago, I had the opportunity to travel to Turkey, uh, which is, of course, called Asia Minor in the Bible, the, uh, the country where the seven churches of Asia Minor in Revelation chapters two and three uh, are situated. And one of the things, little sidebars that I discovered about Turkey is that they have no old age homes. And when I asked the guy, Halit uh, Uchan, uh, a Turk that was our tour guide, I asked him, how come Turkey has no old age homes? And he said, it's because in their culture, it is the blessing of the eldest son to look after his parents and to take them into his home. And if the eldest son cannot do it, it will fall to the second one or to the third, or if the sons cannot do it, the daughters then will get the privilege of looking after the parents. And that is why they have no old age homes. Something I think that uh, we uh, as a nation could, uh, could learn uh, to, to adopt. So we owe them our care. And remember what James chapter one, verse 27 says, James would give us a definition of uh, pure and undefiled religion. He says it is to visit the orphans and the widows in their distress and to keep oneself unspotted or undefiled uh, by this world. Another thing that's interesting about our savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, is that even while he was hanging on the cross in pain, while he was hanging on the cross in pain, John chapter 19, verses 26 and 27, Jesus, looking through eyes that probably could hardly see anymore. Remember, he had been brutally beaten. He had been treated very cruelly. He had been brutally nailed to the cross. He was hanging there in pain. But he looks down and he sees his mother. And he sees John, the disciple whom he loved, standing next to his mother. And he says to his mother, mother, your son. And to John, he says, son your mother. And the scripture says that from that time, the disciple took her into his home. Now, there is a, a church history. This is extra biblical church history records that John later on took the mother of Jesus, that's Mary, to Ephesus, where she lived there until she died. In fact, there is a, there is a church building, a chapel, a stone chapel, which is dedicated to, uh, to Mary. Uh, and it's a place that you can visit today. And, uh, you know, they use it as a way of honoring or uh, venerating uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus. So our mothers deserve the very best care that we can afford to give them. Some of them may require professional and medical care, but we should do, we should do all uh, uh, in, that is in our power to be able to help them. In conclusion, uh, Brother Leroy Brownlow, I'm sure you remember Brother Leroy Brownlow by that purple book, Why I'm a Member of the Church of Christ. Remember that beautiful book that he wrote? And Leroy, Leroy Brownlow said, Mother is the heartbeat of the home. And without her, there seems to be no heart throb. A lady by the name of Janet Fitch writes, You were my home, Mother. You were my home. I want to close with a poem that says, it seems unfair that just once a year, we should talk about our mothers dear, to say kind things of all they've done and how they've sacrificed their own fun so that we could be where we are today and enjoy the blessings on life's pathway. Thank God for the mothers they prayed and for the sacrifices that they made. How can we repay her for all she has done? Would we offer her the moon and the sun no amount of gifts could pay for her love mothers truly are a gift from above the bible says give her the praise that she is due for what she has done for me and for you may god bless our mothers our grandmothers our great grandmothers and our great great grandmothers as we honor them not only today but all the days of our lives god has promised to bless those who do Thank you for your time and attention tonight. Thank you for the opportunity to be with you. It's been such a joy. I really enjoyed this time with you together. And may God just continue to bless you. And may you grow and go from strength to strength. Amen.